Welcome, I'm Lee Cowan and this is Here Comes the Sun, a closer look at some of the people, places, and things we bring you every weekend on Sunday morning. John David Washington took a circuitous route to his career as an actor. As Califasane learned, it's all in the genes. Hey, I'm comfortable up here. I'm, uh... Some would say the 38-year-old was born to act. His mom, Pauletta, is an actor, and so is his dad, a guy named Denzel. My father, he walked me around these streets when he was getting ready for Shakespeare in the Park, you know, mm. Richard III. And I used to love when he would recite his lines. At first, John David did not follow in his father's footsteps. He went to Morehouse, the historically black college in Atlanta, on a football scholarship. There's more from Kellefa's chat with John David Washington coming up a little later in the show. Do you think that your experience here on Broadway is going to change your approach to making films? Uh, it will definitely influence it in a positive way. It, like I said, I feel like I get through this in one piece. <laughs> uh, I, I will graduate a stronger with more armor, with more tools, um, and just a, a richer experience and uh, an understanding of, of the artistry. Mm. Uh, this is what, that's what I signed up for. I signed up to be the best version of myself, and I feel like uh, as <laughs> turbulent, as painful, as uh, anxious, anxiety-ridden experience has been, this has been, I'm going to come out of it a, a, better, a better person. Then Seth Doan takes us for pizza in its birthplace, Italy. Cooked in about 90 seconds at an intense 800 degree heat, pizza is the soul of Naples, says master pizza maker or pizzaiolo Antonio Starita. At 80 years old, he knows his wood-burning oven and whips up a margarita pizza, mozzarella, tomato and basil. One popular story says it was invented for Italy's Queen Margarita in the 1800s. That's all coming up right here on Here Comes the Sun. John David Washington is making a name for himself as a serious actor in projects like HBO's Ballers and Spike Lee's Black Clan. But as Califasane discovered, that's no easy feat with a famous father. So when you're walking down the street and you look up and you see your name on the marquee, are you shocked or are you used to it by now? It makes me nervous every time. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh my God. But I also see like my chain, that's my uncle's chain, my uncle Woodson. So like, I also feel like part of my family is with me. Actor John David Washington is making his Broadway debut as Boy Willie in August Wilson's yeah. The Piano Lesson. I'm comfortable up here. I'm, uh... Some would say the 38-year-old was born to act. His mom, Pauletta, is an actor, and so is his dad, a guy named Denzel. My father, he walked me around these streets when he was getting ready for Shakespeare in the Park, you know, mm. Richard III, and I used to love when he would recite his lines. At first, John David did not follow in his father's footsteps. He went to Morehouse, the historically black college in Atlanta, on a football scholarship. What motivated it really was uh, independence, hmm. was my own name, was being able to carry my own weight in my, li in my life. Even right. though I was hiding what I really wanted to do, I, it gave me an identity. You were hiding what you really wanted to do. Because of who I'm related to. My, my mother is an extremely talented artist, and my father is one of the greatest of all time. I, he's my favorite actor. I was intimidating. When we're in the comforts of my own home and with the family, I felt comfortable. But then when I get to the outside world, it, it didn't seem as simple to right. just pursue it. And I felt football would change that narrative when they saw me play ball. It didn't quite work out that way. That's what I thought was going to happen until I, I read the Atlanta Journal-Constitution. Um, I think it was my freshman year, and I had a great game, and you know, Denzel's son runs for this many yards <laughs> and this many touchdowns. So I, wow. I, I realized then it was inescapable. After college, he played football in a startup league, the UFL. Then, in 2013, he ruptured his Achilles tendon. He decided to make a career change. How do you make that turn? You start taking headshots? You, you, start, right, right. you know, I would say, I would recommend take, take some good headshots. <laughs> but uh, it was an open call audition for a story about football players. Still injured and on pain medication, he went to his first audition for a new HBO series called Ballers. The plan was get comfortable with auditioning, get right. told no, and to come out here to New York and study. Again, it didn't go as he'd expected. Welcome to the Miami Dolphins, son. After a series of follow-up auditions, he got the part of Ricky Jarrett. 
It was a life-changing moment for me. I felt good after like maybe the fifth or sixth audition, like, all right, I can do this. What did you learn about yourself as you started to become a professional actor? I learned what happiness really is. He went on to star in Black Klansman, directed by Spike Lee. I'm undercover. He's got a gun. I'm a cop. Then Tenet, directed by Christopher Nolan. I realized I wasn't working for you. We've both been working for me. I'm the protagonist. And now, Amsterdam, directed by David O. Russell. You've worked with, you know, legendary directors. Now you're working with a director who's known you since you were a baby. Right. <laughs> That's Latanya Richardson-Jackson, director of The Piano Lesson, which co-stars her husband, Samuel L. Jackson. The Jacksons and the Washingtons are old friends. What's it like being on set with a partnership like that? The attention's off me a lot of times, <laughs> I, I gotta say that. So you sit back and you, you shut up and learn something, John David. So does your co-star, Samuel, take direction? from your director, LaTanya? Well, define take direction. We all, I feel like they speak another language in the subtext. <laughs> At the Yale Repertory Theater 35 years ago, Samuel L. Jackson originated the role John David is playing on Broadway. If you have a piece of land, you'll find everything else fall right in place. You can stand right up next to the white man and talk to him about the price of cotton, the weather. I'm on stage <laughs> seeing Sam Jackson and I'm delivering some lines knowing he delivered these, you know, 1987. I'm like, I can't believe this is happening. So, yeah, I guess God is saying, yeah, it's time. Just grow up, you know, put up a shut up, man. Have your parents come to see the play? My mother is like, the question is how many times has she seen it? I get notes from them too. Mm. I get notes. But John David Washington says he's done trying to prove himself. Like I have to understand that I can have the best game career, the headline's always going to be what it is. So to try to prove something to somebody is, right. uh, is a fool's errand. Do you ever think about that day happening when people say, oh yeah, Denzel Washington, that's John David's dad? <sighs> nah, I don't see it as a reality for me. He's larger than life. So no, I don't think of it that way. No, I can't. Maybe one day you'll have a kid. Right. People will say. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, I hope so. I hope so. <laughs> yeah. Indeed. Yeah. More exclusive excerpts from their conversation coming up a little later in the show. But first, grabbing a slice of Naples, Italy. Pizza is a favorite food of many, and in Italy, it's an art. Seth Doan introduces us to the masters of the craft. This bustling city in the shadow of a volcano has a passion for food which explodes onto the street and has been exported around the world. Ecco, bravo. Naples gave us pizza. Cooked in about 90 seconds at an intense 800 degree heat, pizza is the soul of Naples, says master pizza maker or pizzaiolo Antonio Starita. At 80 years old, he knows his wood-burning oven and whips up a margarita pizza, mozzarella, tomato, and basil. One popular story says it was invented for Italy's Queen Margarita in the 1800s. Starita embraces tradition, but did not like making pizza at first. You didn't like it. I liked it, he admitted, when I saw the money coming in. <laughs> Pizza's popularity means big business, clear to anyone who's scrolled social media and seen the growing number of ads for those home pizza ovens. I shouldn't say so, but it's so, so easy to make. Chef Stefano Caligari, who has restaurants in New York and Rome, says far from being a threat, those home ovens may actually boost business. It helps? Yes. How so? Because it makes you closer than with pizza. And even people, they challenge. Oh, it's better pizza I bake than this famous pizza yolo, you know? The you beauty know of pizza is its simplicity, he says. You can eat it with your hands. <laughs> and there are few rules. You must know that pineapple on a pizza is something, oh, like devil for Italian pizza yolo. Pizza, cacio e pepe. He uses an unusual ingredient, ice. It melts and he tops it with pecorino cheese and pepper, a twist on the dish, cacio e pepe. 
we will see how actually it's made through Neapolitan pizza. Because For home pizza makers, pizza, the Verace Pizza Napolitana Association, which usually teaches pros, offers an online class with oven maker Uni, whose sales soared during the pandemic. Fior di latte is the ideal cheese. Joining from the U.S., a student in Virginia and Stephanie and David Javier, who set up on their back deck, bringing a bit of Naples to Queens, New York. Isn't it easier just to go down the street and order a pizza? <laughs> I guess it, it is convenient, but there's a little bit of being able to eat what you made, satisfaction from that. It's not just beginners using these ovens. Pizza chef Salvatore Santucci, who has huge wood-burning ovens at his pizzeria in a suburb of Naples, is my garage, eh? showed us where he makes the dish when he's at home, his garage. Una pizza napoletana cuoce per calore, non cuoce per fiamma. A Neapolitan pizza cooks via heat, not flame, he said. Whether we have a gas, wood or electric oven, if all three are at the right temperature, the pizza cooks exactly the same. Uguale. But back at Starita Pizza... It doesn't compare. No, no, no comparazione. This traditionalist was not convinced. He's made pizza for a pope and has an almost religious reverence for this. As long as I'm alive, he said, I'll never let them take away my wood-burning oven. What have you learned from the time that you've spent in North Carolina? I've learned that racism is as real as you and I talking right now. We'll have more with John David Washington coming up next. Stay with us. Welcome back. As promised, here's more with John David Washington. You seem like you often ended up playing characters that are moving between different worlds, trying to figure out what's happening. You think about ballers and the idea of navigating the NFL and financial success and what's it like to suddenly have some money. Mm. Think about Ron Stallworth mm. in Black Klansman, right? Uh, sure who's trying to get comfortable in this world mm -hmm. um, that he's very much not used to. The protagonist in Tenet, you know, spends, spends the whole movie kind of trying to figure out, like, what's going on? Do you ever feel like that? In a way, yeah. I, I, I you know, I lend my life to these characters, and these characters uh, help me comprehend what my life means in some ways. Mm. So making those, I never made those connections like that before, but... Um, I love contradictory characters. I like characters that are in search of. I don't. Th I always feel like I, I understand the character more when, when you know, we rap. <laughs> like weeks mm -hmm. later, like, oh, that's what that's what it is. Mm -hmm. So uh, why? Because while you're shooting, you're like inside it. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not so analytical about it. Like I, it's hard for me to describe my process and what the character's going through and be so factual about things, mm -hmm. because it's 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 always constant discovery. Mm -hmm. I'm always discovering. Um, something about the character all the time while I'm working and I'm, so, I'm trying to be open, trying to be a vessel of information and feeling that I can transcribe emotionally and deliver it through uh, the performance. So if, if I'm too aware of what right. this person is or who he is, I think that could be a deterrent. Was it important to you to go to a historically black college? I wanted to go there because my cousin went there who's like a brother to me. I was the best man at his wedding. Um, and I just felt at home, you mm -hmm. know, this, the Southern culture. I thought that there was some good football being played out there. I wanted to prove myself. Mm -hmm. This Valley kid can hang with the best of them in the South. So that was a part of it, you know, mm -hmm. the marching bands, the, 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 the Greek life, even though I never joined. It was just, um, it just spoke my language. Mm -hmm. And I guess I was so used to a certain way of learning and the environment in which I was learning in for so long, being from Los Angeles, that uh, I... I it was just calling to me, the black college experience. And I wouldn't change it for the world. I'd, I'd go back every time and make that same decision. So if someone had walked you down this street when you were a boy and showed you your name on the marquee right. starring on Broadway in the piano lesson, what would your reaction have been? Well, how old would I be in this scenario? <laughs> you tell me, 10 years old. If I'm 10, oh, I'd be overjoyed. I'd be, my eyes would be like the cartoon eyes when they get all big. <laughs> if you asked me, like, 10 years ago, mm -hmm. I'd be shaking. I'd be, uh, I don't know if I can, I don't know, I don't know. But, but at that age, yes, I'd have been running towards it. Broadway's a pretty good place to, <laughs> to learn how to act. I mean, you know. <laughs> you know uh, the, the thing for me is, though, it, it's those rehearsals. Mm -hmm. You know, on stage, it's, you know, I use my instincts and get everything I've pulled in and, 
and flesh it out. But those rehearsals, mm -hmm. those, those, uh, those sessions with Peter J. Fernandez two hours before rehearsal starts. That's what it's. That's what I was signing up for. Getting yelled at and 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 flushed out by Latanya Jackson <laughs> to, to 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 build me back up and says you got it is what I signed up for. D does Samuel ever talk to you about this character that he originated? Yeah, yeah, he, he does. He uh, he talks about it, but he's he's been so supportive mm. of me and in my interpretation of it, and and he gives me little nuggets of truth. I feel like I've oh at least every time he does, I feel like oh I must have done something good because he's given me a little nugget here mm. or there. So I must have been, you know, I'm always feeling like I'm trying to earn his respect right. and his trust. I feel that way with all the cast members, you know, mm -hmm. uh, Michael Potts as well, because they, and I just look, I, I mention them again because, you know, they've been putting so much work in for yeah. so long, and I mean, they're legendary. And I, Michael Potts, some people might know from The Wire, but right. he's, a, he's a real revelation in this production, I think, the way, he, the way he inhabits the stage. Incredible. Yeah. Every night, too. Yeah. And uh, so I just, you know, I'm always, you know, wanting to earn, you know, their respect and their trust up there on that stage. And uh, so, yeah, seeing how they communicate, um, and they've been very, you know, like uncles in the play. They, they've been very helpful with uh, the process. Mm. They make fun of me. They, they get on me. <laughs> that's all a part of it, though, like sports. You right. know, there's some hazing there, rookie hazing, and that's going to be a part of it. That's going to make you stronger because when we're out there, you know, it can't be worse. Whatever the, the feedback was, it can't be worse than what they put me through. <laughs> You know, and that gives me courage. You've been through the again. Broadway boot camp. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the August Wilson boot camp, if you will. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. Do you think that your experience here on Broadway is going to change your approach to making films? Uh, it will definitely influence it in a positive way. It, like I said, I feel like I get through this in one piece. <laughs> uh, I, I will graduate a stronger with more armor, with more tools. Um, and just a, a richer experience and uh, an understanding of, of the artistry. Mm. Uh, this is what, that's what I signed up for. I signed up to be the best version of myself. And I feel like uh, as <laughs> turbulent, as painful, as uh, <laughs> anxious, anxiety-ridden experience has been, this has been, I'm going to come out of it a, a, better, a better person. What's it like to be practicing this craft with a theater full of people watching you, <laughs> rather than just a camera crew? Uh, you get immediate responses. You know, you're going to see every crowd every night has been different. Mm -hmm. And uh, when they're with you, they're with you. And uh, it, it's, it's been a great experience to, to feel that immediacy. I feel more in control of the overall of my character. You know, films, they're going to cut it together. I've been, I've been a part of some things where, like, they, why do they use that take? Or they cut that, they cut that together. They, they take out a lot of, it doesn't, it doesn't look like it felt, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of times. Uh, sometimes it does, though. It, you know, again, I've worked with some people that, like, I'm surprised at what they kept. Spike Lee for one, Christopher Nolan for another. Like, they really trusted what you did, and they're going to use it. But it doesn't really happen for the most part. But on stage, it's all you. Have you had situations where the crowd is a little tougher and you have to work a little harder to bring them along? Well, I, I, I try not to be aware of it. Wherever the laughs come, they come. Mm -hmm. I get them in weird places, some nice. Right. Every night I've been getting laughs in a different place. I didn't think, oh, wow, that, they thought mm -hmm. that was funny, okay. But I don't play into it. I, 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 sometimes it could be a home team, home, a home right. game. Sometimes it could be an away game. Right. But you have to run the offense. You got to run the plays. You got to, you got to be sharp every night. They might put eight defenders in the box. Hey, you still got, hey, make it happen. <laughs> make it work. Right. Covering all the gaps. That's it, man. Well, hey, get three yards. Do what you got to do. I mean, this play is partly a play about the Great Migration, right? It's set in a black neighborhood in Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. But the characters are always talking about what it means to come from the South, what it might mean to go back to the South, how things are or aren't different up north versus mm -hmm. down south. What have you learned from the time that you've spent in North Carolina? I've learned that racism is as real as you and I talking right now. I've learned that uh, in the south, racism is more visible. Uh, it's easier to, to, to point out. It's easier to detect. It's, it's a little more complicated in, in, in the northern region of America and, and, and on the west. And that, that gives me I feel more comfortable in knowing exactly where the racism's coming from. I feel, I feel more confident knowing exactly how somebody thinks. In the mm. South, I find that you know how people think. Mm. They're going to let you know. And uh, there's a great pride in, in being honest, even if you're a liar <laughs> in the South. 
or even if you're a thief, being mm -hmm. a very honest one. Mm -hmm. Being loving, being kind, it's all at the first step. Mm -hmm. You know, I think they lead with, at least my family, led with love and God and, and those morals. And um, that's something that, uh, that is embedded in me for the rest of my life, that I always take with me, no matter where I am in the world. I'm Lee Cowan. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time on Here Comes the Sun.